Welcome to KetoMealsAndRecipes.com. Today I'm going to use my amazing Keto Korean barbecue sauce, also known as Keto Bulgogi Marinade, in order to make this absolutely delicious spicy pork bulgogi, also called Keto Korean Pork Barbecue, which is a popular Korean recipe that is frequently served wrapped in a soft lettuce leaf, as I'm showing here. The macronutrient ratio for the spicy pork bulgogi is 2.1 to 1, with 5.7 grams of total carbs, 1.1 grams of dietary fiber, resulting in 4.6 grams of net carbs per serving. The easiest way to make this is to have your butcher pre-cut the meat into very thin sections, but sometimes it's difficult to find the very thinly sliced pork loin, or you may not have a butcher that is willing to do this. So in this video, I'm going to show you how very easy it is to do yourself. The very first thing you do after you buy a nice pork loin is take it out of its wrapping, pat it dry. I put my entire pork loin into the freezer for about one to two hours or until the meat feels firm to the touch, but the meat should not be frozen. Chilling the meat and getting it firm, this makes it very easy to cut the pork tenderloin into very thin slices. When you're ready to make the cuts, take your time and cut the slices as thin as you possibly can make them. My slices were on average about three millimeters or one eighth of an inch thick. Although some of my slices were a bit thicker because I don't do this very often. <laughs> I have to admit, I have a wonderful butcher and he does this for me most of the times. And if the occasional slice is a bit too thick, that's okay. Just try to do your best because the thinner and more even the thickness of each slice is, it will make it much easier for you to fry the meat. If the meat is all the same thickness, they will take the same amount of time to fry on each side. I'd also like to mention that buying an entire pork loin is very cost effective. This section of meat is probably one of the least expensive high protein and high fat meats that you can buy in North America at least. When you buy an entire pork loin, you may notice that there's a thick section of fat. Just trim this away and set it aside. This is actually really useful. Let me explain. You take your fat and put the fat in a frying pan set over low heat and have the fat cook very slowly. As it's cooking, the fat will melt and you will create this amazing DIY lard, which by the way, you can save it for other uses. In this way, you're actually utilizing the entire pork loin and there's no waste. The second thing I do is to make a fresh batch of my Keto Korean barbecue sauce or Keto Bulgogi marinade. I usually make a full batch because it only takes five minutes. Because I'm going to use my entire pork loin, I will be making several prep ahead servings of my spicy pork bulgogi. So I will end up using most of the batch of the Korean barbecue sauce. The other reason I like to make my Korean barbecue sauce just before using it is because I want the Asian pear enzymes to be as fresh as possible, which will help to tenderize the meat and infuse the most amount of flavor. When you finish cutting all of your meat and your marinade is ready, place the pork slices into a deep mixing bowl or a large casserole dish. Pour the Keto Bulgogi marinade over the meat. Then toss the meat and sauce together to ensure that all the meat is well coated. If you want to make your spicy pork bulgogi for the same day, you have to let it rest for at least one hour in order for the marinade to work and for the flavors to infuse the meat. But in order to get the best enzymatic tenderizing of the meat and infusion of flavor, cover your bowl with cling wrap and put that into the refrigerator and marinate overnight. But remember to take your meat out of the refrigerator in order to allow it to get back to room temperature before you begin frying. As I mentioned, I used an entire pork loin. And from this one pork loin, I had enough to make four full servings, with each serving being weighed out to equal 690 grams or 24 ounces. Then I placed each serving into a labeled and dated freezer bag. And I squeezed out the air to prevent as much freezer burn as possible. Also, on the day that you're going to fry your spicy pork bulgogi, Peel your carrot and cut the carrot into thin one half centimeter or one quarter inch diagonal sections. And then cut each section into one half centimeter or one quarter inch matchsticks. When you're done, set the carrot matchsticks aside for a moment. And while you're at it, cut the green onions into thin sections and then set them aside as well. Now that everything is prepared, it's time to fry the meat. I mentioned in my Keto Beef Bulgogi video, in Korea, the meat is usually cooked over a barbecue. But today I'm going to do it on my skillet, or you can use a wok if you have one. As always, heat the skillet or wok over medium heat. And when your pan is hot, 
Add the first two tablespoons of roasted sesame seed oil and coat the bottom and sides of the pan very well. Next, carefully lay down each sheet of marinated meat so that it's flat on the bottom of the pan and don't crowd the meat. You'll get the best results if the meat is cooked in small batches. After laying down your meat, cook until the underside is slightly crusty and golden brown. With your tongs, flip and cook the other side until it too has a golden brown crust. And when done, remove and place the fried meat on a serving platter. And then just repeat until all the marinated pork slices are done. Before placing the next batch of meat, make sure you add one tablespoon of your sesame seed oil and then place the meat in the pan. After you've fried all your meat, the last step is to fry the matchstick carrots. At which point you add one more teaspoon of sesame seed oil to the pan and toss the matchstick carrots into the pan. Cook and toss until the carrots are soft but are still crispy. That should be about two minutes. Immediately scoop out the carrots and place into a separate bowl. For a nice presentation, layer the keto spicy pork bulgogi onto a serving platter. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the best way to eat this amazing meat is wrapped in a leaf of soft lettuce. We usually use either Boston, or sometimes called butter lettuce, or iceberg lettuce. Then sprinkle the matchstick carrots and green onion on top. One optional step, which I didn't do this time, is to finish with a light sprinkling of toasted sesame seeds. I wish that you could smell how wonderfully fragrant this spicy pork bulgogi really is. Although this is delicious, you don't really want to eat it by itself, and some of the sides that I like to serve with my spicy pork bulgogi are things like kimchi, which I pick up at my local Korean grocery store. And you want an easy side dish you can make at the same time as you're frying your spicy keto pork bulgogi. I will usually make my easy keto grilled zucchini spears at the same time. Sort of a Korean Mediterranean fusion thing. It's actually really delicious together. Whichever way you decide to serve your tasty spicy pork bulgogi, enjoy. Thank you very much for watching my video and please turn on your notification bell. And if you like the recipe, please share it with someone you know. And as always, the link for the printable spicy pork bulgogi and other mentioned recipes are available in the description below.